Hello and welcome back everyone to the Polity Primer series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pragya. In today's episode of Polity Primer and in our constitutional amendments, we are going to discuss yet another significant and important constitutional amendment acts which inserted the concept of local self-government in India. And yes, you are guessing it right, we are going to talk about the 73rd and the 74th Constitutional Amendment Acts. In this discussion, we are firstly going to study about the evolution of the local self-government in India. Then we are going to talk about the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act and its salient features or the constitutional changes it brought in our Indian constitution. And then we are also going to talk about the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. And lastly, we are going to discuss some of the important questions from the perspective of your prelims examination. So, if I talk about the evolution of the local self-government in India, okay. So, recently we have celebrated the 30th anniversary of the enactment of seventy third and seventy fourth constitutional amendment acts. So it has been thirty years when we finally granted the constitutional status to our local self government institutions. So historically Self-rule in villages had been present since many centuries in India. However, Panchayati Raj as we know it today has evolved or shaped over the last one and a half century. And definitely the British government which was ruling over the India had a role to play in it. So, in 1882, Lord Ripon proposed a resolution of decentralization through a large network of local self-governing bodies. So, this proposal was firstly brought in the year 1882 by Lord Ripon. Moving forward, in the year 1909, the Royal Commission on Decentralization was formed and this commission found that yes, the local self-government institutions are good but they suffer from certain lacunas. And it said that you need to give them more autonomy, okay. You need to remove their lacunas. So, this all was suggested by the Royal Commission on Decentralization and this was accepted as well. But there was no functioning of the local self-government institutions in India. They were not institutionalized. They did not have a separate status, okay. So, after independence, what happened? We included the... Article 40 in our Directive Principles of State Policy. And what does Article 40 of our Indian Constitution talks about? It talks about organization of village panchayats. Organization of village panchayats. Okay. So, as we all know that DPSP are not justiciable in nature, that means the state has to make a law for enforcing them. You cannot go to the courts, the courts and say that, okay, now enforce my directive principles of state policy. No, they are non-justiciable in nature. So, after independence, we discussed various proposals from 1951 to the 1957 about granting a formal institutional status to the local self-government institutions in India because decentralization was necessary at that point of time because many of our people were living in the villages. Moving forward, so various committees were constituted by the government of India to look into the decentralization aspect of the governments in India because governments in India at that point of time were basically the central government and state government. We did not have a local self-government at that point of time in our uh, constitution of India, okay. So, the first committee was the Balwant Rai Mehta Committee. 
a three tier governance model for the panchayati raj system will include the gram panchayats at the village level panchayat samitis at the block level and jila parishads at the district level so these were the recommendations made by the balwant rai mehta committee the district collector will serve as the chairperson of the jila parishad it is necessary to ensure the transfer of resources and power to these uh, institution if we are creating them so these were the major recommendations of the balwant rai mehta committee moving forward to the ashok mehta committee so it suggested that a three tier system to be replaced by a two tier system political parties should participate at all levels in the elections then compulsory powers of taxation are to be given to these institution and zila parishad is to be made responsible for planning at the state level so it had a change of perspective regard uh, from the balwant rai mehta committee and it said that no we only need two tier levels of government we do not need a three tier system of government moving forward a minister for panchayati raj is to be appointed by the state council of ministers and constitutional recognition to be given to these panchayati raj institutions so for the very first time the ashok mehta committee talked about the giving of constitutional recognition to the local self governments in india then came the gvk rao committee this committee recommended that, that panchayati raj institutions be given greater autonomy and that they be made accountable to the people they serve and it also suggested that pris be given the power to levy taxes and fees moving forward to the lm singhvi committee so constitutional recognition for pri institutions was again suggested by this uh, committee as well apart from the ashok mehta committee okay then nyay panchayats to be established for clusters of villages then pk thangon committee it recommended constitutional recognition for the local government bodies so what can be the conclusion that all of these commissions which were constituted by the indian government at that point of time to form a three tier government in india suggested that this should be done by bringing a constitutional change or by having a constitutional amendment by exercising the power given to the parliament under article 368 of our indian constitution so finally the parliament enacted the 73rd and the 74th constitutional amendment acts to give a constitutional recognition to the local self government institutions in india so the main feature of the amendment that is the third, 73rd amendment is to introduce panchayat system as the grass root level it means to have democracy reach at the grass root level okay and that is why after this amendment we say that india has democracy even at the grass root levels it also gave a constitutional base to the institution of the panchayati raj and a new part that is part 9 which talks about the panchayats has been added to the constitution consisting of articles 243 to 243o and a new schedule that is the 11th schedule has also been um, added to our indian constitution by way of the 73rd constitutional amendment act moving forward panchayats are proposed to be established as the village intermediate and district levels that means it followed a three tier system and this was in consonance with the recommendations of the balwant rai mehta committee and will be directly elected by electorate from territorial constituency in the respective panchayat area that means they will be accountable to the people they are serving directly the underlying idea is to make panchayats as vibrant units of local administration in the rural areas now let us analyze what are the constitutional changes that have been brought by the 73rd constitutional amendment act in our 
Indian Constitution. So basically, Article 243 deals with the definition section. Definitions section. And Article 243 Clause A states about the body known as a Gram Sabha. So basically, Gram Sabhas are the basic units of democratic systems which consists of the people registered in the electoral rolls of the village within the area of the panchayats and the elections are conducted by the state election commission state election commission to the gram sabhas then article 243 clause b uh, discusses about the constitution of the Panchayat. So, as I have said that it is constituted on three levels that is village level, intermediate level and the district level. Okay, But the intermediate level will only be constituted in a village if it has a population more than 20 lakhs, more than 20 lakhs. Otherwise, it is going to be a two-tier system. So, the intermediate level will only be there for those villages who have a population of more than 20 lakhs. Moving forward, election of members and chairpersons. The members of panchayats at the village, intermediate and district levels shall be elected directly by the people. Okay. And the chairman of the panchayat at the intermediate and district level shall be indirect, elected indirectly from amongst the elected members thereof. Okay. And the conduct of elections to the panchayat shall also be handled by the state election commissions as I have mentioned before. Moving forward. Reservation of seats. So, basically there is a provision for reservation of seats for the FC community. ST communities, backward classes and women. Okay, so the reservation system is there for the SCs, STs and chairpersons of the panchayats at all levels in proportion to their population. Okay, and one third of the positions in all panchayat institutions are reserved for women and let me know in the comment box below which article specifically talks about this one third reservation for women because this is a most frequently asked question in your competitive examination. Moving forward, what shall be the duration of the panchayat? So, as per article 243 clause E of the constitution of India, Every panchayat, unless sooner dissolved under any law for the time being in force, shall continue for five years from the date appointed for its first meeting and no longer. So, basically the duration is of five years, but supposedly in the case if it is dissolved earlier, then the new panchayat which is constituted will work for the remaining term. Okay, moving forward. Let us talk about the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. So, basically the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act inserted part 9A and schedule 12 in our Indian Constitution. And this talks about constitution of urban local bodies. It talks about the constitution of the municipalities. Municipalities. So basically it is there to have a local self-government at the urban level. Okay. So the constitution 74th amendment act 1992 seeks to strengthen the system of municipal bodies in the urban areas as I have said okay. The idea is to place the local self government in urban areas on a sound and effective footing as per the constitution of the local self government in the village areas. So you will have it in the village areas as well and you will have it in the urban areas as well okay. Both this and the 73rd amendments represent measures for decentralization of power and greater participation of people in the self-rule. Moving forward, let us examine the constitutional changes that have been introduced by the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. 
So basically, Article 243 Clause Q of the Constitution of India deals with the constitution of municipalities. That is Nagar Panchayat, Municipal Council and Municipal Corporation in a city. Article 243 Clause R deals with the composition of municipalities. It states that all of its members are directly elected by the people of the municipal area which is divided into territorial constituencies and these are known as ward. So, you might have heard also that the, yes, the elections for the ward commissioners is going on and you have to enroll yourself as a voter in the list prepared by the state election commission. So, always remember that the elections are being conducted by the state election commission for the uh, panchayats as well as the municipal corporations or councils. Article 243 clause S talks about the constitution and composition of ward committees consisting of wards and members of wards who represent that ward in the municipalities. Okay, moving forward. Article 243 clause D T deals with the reservation of seats in every municipalities. So, basically the seats are reserved for the SC communities, ST communities, backward classes and women. Okay, so it is reserved not only at the panchayat level but also in the urban local self-government institutions. Then Article 243 Clause U deals with the duration of municipalities and what is the duration? Normal duration is 5 years. But yes, it can be dissolved earlier and the new municipality which is elected will continue to serve for the remaining term. Article 243 Clause V talks about the grounds for disqualification of the members of municipality and Article 243 Clause Y provides for the constitution of the State Finance Commission which will give its opinion on the distribution of finances between the state and the municipality and will determine the aid subsidies. So, not only it talks about the constitution of the State Election Commission, it also talks about the constitution of the State Finance Commission, okay, so that the finances can be divided between the state government and the local self institutions accordingly. Okay, and the 74th constitutional amendment and the 73rd constitutional amendment also says that there is a bar of court to hear the election petitions. So, the court is in India cannot here the challenge to the election to the panchayats and municipalities, they are barred to do so until and unless you present before them a petition regarding the uh, elections. Okay, so firstly you will go to the state election commission and then if necessary you will file an election uh, petition after that so that the courts could hear you on that election petition. But directly you cannot approach the courts in India for challenging the elections of the panchayats and municipalities. Okay, with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have understood that yes, decentralization was there in India since historic times, but we did not provide a constitutional status to them. After independence, we constituted various committees to look into the issue and finally they all suggested that yes, constitutional status should be given to them. And that is why we had the 73rd and the 74th constitutional amendment acts in our Indian constitution so that we can cons give constitutional sanctity or constitutional recognition to the local self-government in India. Okay, and we have discussed the constitutional changes that were introduced by these constitutional amendment acts. Now, let us discuss the question which I asked you in my previous session. So, the question was consider the following statements. Your statement number one was the 69th amendment act has inserted article 239 clause double A in the Indian constitution. Your statement number two is article 239 clause double A impasse the LG to refer a difference of opinion on any matter with the council of ministers to the president. So, which of the statements given above is are correct? Your options are option A is one only, option B is two only. Option C is both 1 and 2 and option D is none of the above. So, a correct answer is going to be option C. 
both of these statements are correct. So, if you remember that yes, Article 239 Clause AA was inserted in our Indian Constitution by way of the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act and yes, in the matter of difference of opinion with the Council of Ministers, the LG can directly refer the matter to the President of India. And that is why this also forms a point of criticism of the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act and that is why the answer is both 1 and 2. Moving forward to discuss the practice questions from our today's session. So, the question is the fundamental object of the Panchayati Raj system is to ensure which of the following and this is a PYQ that has been asked in the year 2015. Number 1, people's participation in development. Number two, political accountability. Number three, democratic decentralization. Number four, financial mobilization. So, select the correct answer using the code given below. Your options are option A is 1, 2 and 3 only. Option B is 2 and 4 only. Option C is 1 and 3 only. And option D is 1, 2, 3 and 4. All of these statements are correct. So, your correct answer is option C. Only one and the third uh, statements are correct because it wanted to enhance the people's participation in the democracy at the grassroots levels and definitely it wanted to promote decentralization. Moving forward, let us discuss another question. The question is consider the following statements and this is also a PYQ which was asked to you in the year 2000. 16. So, basically statement number 1, the minimum age prescribed for any person to be a member of Panchayat is 25 years. Number 2, a Panchayat reconstituted after premature dissolution continues only for the remainder period. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Your option A is 1 only, option B is 2 only, option C is both 1 and 2 and option D is neither 1 nor 2. So, your correct answer will be option 2 only because 25 years is not given it is 21 years you cannot question the election of any member to the panchayat by saying that the minimum age prescribed is 25 years no if he is above 21 years he is eligible to be a member of the panchayat now let us discuss the last question of our today's discussion so, the question is the Constitution 73rd Amendment Act 1992, which aims at promoting the Panchayati Raj institutions in the country, provides for which of the following? And this was also the uh, pre yq that was asked to you in the year 2011. So, your options are option 1, Constitution of District Planning Committees, Statement 2, State Election Commissions to conduct all Panchayat elections, Statement 3, establishment of state finance commissions. So, select the correct answer using the codes given below. Your codes are option A is 1 only, option B is 1 and 2 only, option C is 2 and 3 only and option D is all of these three statements are correct and this answer will be given by you to me in the comment box below. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, you can drop it in the comment box below. If you like the today's discussion and found it to be helpful, kindly like the channel and subscribe to it for more such interesting updates. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.